morning everyone. Uh, it's Autumn Park and it's fairly clear. We're going to have a good race day. We have got two action-packed, very close races on the Autumn Park International layout. It's a low-res race ramble. We're here on the Autumn Park International circuit for round two of the modified Ford Series. Let's get into it. stay on slicks, it looked greasy out on circuit before we played to our hands later in the session when the track started drying out. Let's see how we get on. Very greasy, as you can see here. That is my fastest lap of qualifying. It is the uh, penultimate qualifying lap that I had put in. Unfortunately on this next one, as you can see, bogged by a couple of the faster cars just coming through. Decided to call it. I thought I had a bit more time, but turns out I didn't. Do you know what? I'm really frustrated with that. That was so slippy. But uh, we'll talk more when we get back. If it's gonna rain, I want it to rain properly, like it's starting to now, but we'll see. 
camera. Welcome to the paddock for race one. It may rain, everyone is panicking. Let's see what happens. Is the track going to be greasy? Is the track going to be wet? I don't know. Vlog over. Okay, rolling start for the start of race one. Still very greasy out on circuit, but not enough to warrant the wet tyres. Everyone is in the same problem. Um, it rained even more in the assembly area as we were lining up for race one, but let's get going, I suppose, and try to keep it on the black stuff. Before anyone says anything, I do need to set the camera out every time the sunlight shone on the windscreen with the rain and water on it, it did block your view a little bit. Apologies viewers, please bear with me, there's a lot more action, uh, lot, lot more action to come. Safety cars being called, as you can see, yellow flags and safety car boards everywhere, nice and visible. Um, we're all just following each other around, the packs kind of slowed down. But in the minute, 
I'm going to get the shock of my life because someone appears on the left-hand side when they shouldn't do and comes flying past me. Wait for it, ladies and gentlemen. Wait for it. <gasps> oh, no, 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 no!
watch it that front right corner because I had a bit of contact with Mike Manning. Uh, hopefully we haven't damaged the intercooler or anything. All good fun. So, race one. Let's digest that. Uh, first of all, I went straight to Mike Manning in the Sierra, shook his hand, apologised. That was on me. I just too late on the brakes and Mike rightfully turned in to claim his corner and we had a bit of contact. He's okay. Um, there was no marks on his car. There was, it pushed the wing in a little bit on mine. We straighten that out. And we are getting ready for race two already. Nick and Katie have headed to afternoon tea, but Team Morwin, Driven Mines uh, Chiefs, have, have been superb. So, Carl's getting ready to go out to assembly for race two. Let's go. So, I've just realised I'm low on battery. Race two about to happen. If I run out of battery, you're probably going to see me cut out and then come to me speaking about it. So, let's see how race two goes. It looks dry. Let's go from there. I couldn't have timed that any better, could I? Uh, camera cut out as we went on the green flag lap for race two. So in a sec, I'm gonna play you some of the um, Alpha Live coverage of race two, just to give you an idea of what happened. But she finished well again. Um, it dried up for the second race, so there was none of the proper um, greasy conditions that we had in qualifying and race one. They were absolutely mental to race in, especially on slicks, but we got there. Car has come through relatively unscathed, but there is a couple of things I need to check. Number one would be an issue that occurred sort of three quarters of the way into the race. I had a little bit of fuel starvation, and I need to check whether that was me cocking up the fueling and that I put enough fuel in the car, or whether we need to baffle the standard tank and make sure that we can put 25, 20 litres in this car and run it in a race session without having to worry about fuel starvation. Because when that starts happening, that cuts down the boost. So for the last quarter of the race, I had about a bar of boost because that went into fuel save mode uh, and basically saved the engine from detonating. Turbo engines do not like getting fuel starved. That's where you get detonation from. That's when you have things come out of the side of the block. So I need to look into that. I need to check my fuel system in general, make sure it's still nice and healthy. I've got a swirl pot on the back with pump and filter and everything like that. So I just need to give it a good going over. That's why I'm here tonight. I'm speaking to you on the Wednesday after the meeting. Yeah, there's a few things to go through with this car. She needs a bit of love. She needs a bit of TLC. Uh, but from me, I just want to thank everyone that has helped me that weekend. Nick and Katie that came up from Driven Minds. They couldn't hang on until race two. They had a very important dinner to go to that had already been pre-planned. They, they were mega for me all day. It was a very quick um, timetable, so there was a lot to get done. And Dipstick here forgot to change the battery for the second race as well. So unfortunately, we've got no GoPro coverage of the race itself. It was a bit chaotic in front. Two cars came together. I was running as high as sixth at one point. And um, yeah, we, we, we got there in the end. We finished 10th, fifth in class, race two. I think looking at the points for my class, I'm fourth in the points for my class. And the next one is Castle Coombe. And it looks like we've got three races for Castle Coombe. And I'm really looking forward to it. I really am. So I need to do some checks on this. I need to hopefully clear some codes as well and make sure there is nothing untoward going on. Um, yeah, she needs a little bit of, of love and tenderness before the next round. But it's time to play you some Alpha Live highlights of race two. Thank you very much to 
all my sponsors to EBC Brakes, to Graves Motorsport for the wonderful tyres you guys supply. To the Driving Talk podcast, we're going to be launching season three soon with some new guests on that and of course the Driven Minds Minute. Uh, I've got some wonderful sponsors on board helping me with this car. So to everyone that has had something to do with helping me get this car onto the grid and race it hard, thank you. Thank you so much. Because at the end of the day, you're just helping a guy live his racing dream. So for now, that's a low res ramble. Let's cut some shots of race two and I'll see you next time when I'm prepping this for Cars Cars turn their way out of Britain. Jim Hutchinson's bewinged Mark One Escort on pole position, very, very smart car. So is that, the Jägermeister Ford Capri, which is in the hands of Alan Breck. Mike Manning's Jim McLaughlin yeah. car, but uh, Mike Manning behind the wheel of it. And now down towards his lops they come. Is go, and a good getaway by Jim Hutchinson. Uh, James Allen's Ford Focus slots into third place. He's got Josh Painted on the outside line then as they dive down through Old Hall for the first time. Mike Manning has got a problem by the look of it because his Sierra has coasted through Old Hall from mid-grid and comes out of the corner last. So there's a problem, sadly, for the Texas Liberty Sierra and problems for James Allen, who gets tipped into a spin by Josh Payton. Payton is in the gravel. James Allen, minding his own business, tries to get himself out the other side, but that, I'm afraid, with the Mark II Cortina on the outside of the road at Cascades does not bode well because it's well and truly ensnared in that. Wayne Crabtree's Mark I Escort looking very racy as well there, the blue and orange car as they come up towards Siesta in the hands of Todd Garner and goes up on the inside line to go fourth down to fifth is Garner in sixth place Robert Lewis and Wayne Crabtree seventh now in the escort looking to try to gain ground as they come down the hill as well bearing in mind that Wayne Crabtree started race one last on the grid this has been a good recovery Piers Grange though is just ahead of him as they turn their way through Grange looking the silver mark two right around the outside of Robert Lewis tick up the inside of Oliver Bullion tick and the next target by the end of Lakeside Straight is going to be Todd Garner's Fiesta, which doesn't show on the timing tower. That's Crabtree getting himself up alongside Lewis and taking the omnipotent Capri of Alan Breck with him for good measure. So the Gulf Escort, or Gulf Liberate Escort, to the outside line of the Focus. Alan Breck's grunt and go Capri chased by Mike Thurley and Colin Claxton with their Zach Speed recreation uh, escorts. But the Focuses and Fiestas still holding their own, it must be said, despite the dry nature of the road of the race. But now that Piers has got a clear road ahead of him, let's see what he can do. Because we know that he is, and the car is, very, very quick indeed. So Hutchinson leads the way, and first to third, 8.4 seconds. That's the to... Depending on what Paul Neville's done. Now, he's gone through as well. So Neville is sixth, and seventh now is Matthias. With a minute and a half to go, Jim Hutchinson is going to squeeze one more lap out of this when he gets to the line from Tom Avenden in second. And to round out the top ten, I would offer you uh, will be Robert Lewis ahead of Daz Owen, but with some transponders. And provisional result looks thus. Jim Hutchinson is your race winner for the second time today in the Mark 1 Escort RA, the Mark 1 Escort RA.